What is going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Critical Overload here. This will be a spoiler free review for The Strangers Chapter 1. This is directed by Rennie Harlan, written by Alan Cohen and Alan Friedland. And this is starring Madeline Pesch, Fora Gutierrez, Gabriel Basol, Emma Hovarth, and Richard Brake. And a few others that really don't matter in the grand scheme of things. So... This film is revolving around Maya, who is played by Pesh, who drives across the country with her longtime boyfriend, Ryan, played by Freud, as the pair begin a new life together in the Pacific Northwest. Along the way, their car breaks down in Venus, Oregon, and they are forced to spend a night in an isolated Airbnb home. Through the night, they are terrorized by three murderous masked strangers. Now, The Strangers Chapter 1 isn't the cure for insomnia you might expect. However, it is a lackluster slasher film that mostly misunderstood what made the original so effective, but it never reached utter trash territory for me either. I would say this is watchable at best. I do not mind watching this again. And while it didn't leave me excited for what's to come, I'll still remain hopeful that the next two entries will be an improvement over what we just got with this one. The Strangers is arguably one of the scariest films released in the 2000s. Its follow-up, Pray at Night, was a step in the wrong direction, or a step down, I'll say, but managed to respect the mystique of the characters far better than this latest effort. Alan Cohen and Friedland offer up a screenplay that wastes no time tampering with that mystique, giving us contenders for who could be under these masks in less than 10 minutes. A not so promising opening sequence leads us to meet Maya and Ryan, a likable couple celebrating their five year anniversary who stop in this town called Venus with the most shady individuals known to mankind eyeing them up and down the moment they walk into this diner. A harmless sequence to anyone who hasn't seen the last two films, but this moment provides suspicion on the town folk in a not so subtle way, making the title of this film a little pointless. Aside from that, Maya and Ryan's dynamic is believable and a massive improvement, I'd say, over Kristen and James from the original who had tension in their relationship. I think he had I think she had just like rejected his proposal or something. I don't really remember. It's been a while since I watched the original. Maya and Ryan's love is felt throughout as opposed to those two from the original. They share several sweet moments prior to the chaos, making it easy to root for their survival. However, this likable couple is often at times, well, not just often, many times throughout this movie, they're highly frustrating. Their survival instincts are on par with a newborn or Laurie Strode in the opening of Halloween Resurrection. Horror cliches are to be expected, but some horror films like The Strangers Chapter 1 put such a distracting spotlight on the character's decision making that it becomes impossible to withstand stupidity left and right. If they aren't making ridiculous decisions, both of them gaslight one another like there is no tomorrow about the circumstances that are what they are, but they rationalize them in the most idiotic ways. The level of delusion on display makes it difficult to fully invest in their survival after a while. One of them is confident that someone screwed with their car early on, and the other explains it away with a near car accident or a near car accident they almost had prior to that to make it make sense. That doesn't make any sense at all whatsoever. Then you have one of them being spooked in the dark by an intruder. And another explains that away with them smoking that good kush, if you will. Doesn't make any sense. And a painting on the wall for good measure. Then you have one of them having this horrible display of survival instincts rationalize with the words you were just trying to protect us like these two <laughs> are soulmates you cannot convince me otherwise with the amount of delusion they foster for one another they are soulmates the writing when it came to them and in, in the way they were uh trying to make them rationalize these decisions was very insulting as i just described with those last three examples i didn't find the dialogue in this screenplay to be too bad but some bits early on are a bit dated uh with so many sequences at this cabin being remixes on the original that honestly kept the film from being immersive the way it should have been all i could seemingly consider is how inferior these moments are in comparison to the original speaking of not being immersive if those remix scenes don't ruin that that nauseating opening sequence packed with 10 cuts in 10 seconds will i genuinely couldn't bother to care about that opening sequence because there were just too many cuts so many cuts happening at once makes it impossible for you to like latch or sink your teeth into what's happening on screen it challenges you in a way that makes you want to just completely ignore what's happening right now because it's not fixed on anything it's just chaotic in a way that is unnecessary at times those quick cuts can be effective that was not one of them the, the opening sequence was very ineffective 
This duo of Allens, the co-writers, sure love leaning on jump scares as well, which did more harm than good since this film is lacking ten tension on several occasions, whether it's a mask popping in and out of frame or a loud garbage disposal sound. These moments are eye-rolling and ineffective. When it comes to the three mass strangers though, thankfully outside of presenting us with contenders from the town, all of them remain threatening and anonymous throughout the film. Going into the acting now, Madeline Pesh and Fro Gutierrez somehow make this material work. When I say they somehow make it work, I do mean Madeline. Their chemistry is undeniable and Pesh definitely belongs in the horror genre. Her fear in this film feels as genuine as her infatuation with her on-screen partner. The talent displayed from both saves their characters when you want to just throw your hands up and say screw it, kill them because of how stupid they can be at times. I didn't want them to die. As stupid as they kicked, as they got, I didn't want them to die because of that chemistry and the fact that they came off as a real believable couple who underneath all of their stupid decision making, I still was like, you know what? I want you guys to make it out of here together. And I do again have to say, it's fair to say that Maddie carries Freud throughout this movie. Freud is the inferior one out of this pairing. Now that I've watched the film, I also feel comfortable saying that the cinematography was a bit flat and lifeless. The camera work during the third act in the forest can be good at times, I'll give it that, but it's pretty mediocre otherwise. As far as Rennie Harlan's overall direction, I struggle to see how this is the same person who gave us so many classics. Granted, I know he is up in age, but this was not one of his best at all. Not at all. When it comes down to the lack of suspense, the lack of tension, that is absent throughout up until we get into this sequence in the forest in which we finally feel truly isolated for once. That's diminished by more stupid decision making from one of our protagonists who wastes time taunting someone instead of blowing their brains out. You can I cannot wrap my wrap my mind around why they were written to do some of the dumbest things and again yes dumb decision making is known for the horror genre but like i stated certain movies like this movie highlighted in such a way that it's hard for you to look over it you have to criticize it i'm going to give this movie a five and a half out of ten i enjoyed it for what it was but it's not very good let let me know what you guys think about this down in the comment section below if you haven't already of course make sure you subscribe turn on post notification and miss video in the description i have links on my social media accounts i am on facebook twitter and instagram you can message me there so let me know any movies news or reviews like me to cover in the future and with all that in mind guys i will see you in the next video